In this video, I will explain everything you need to know about dropshotting. I will cover rigs, tackle, presentation, basics and so on. Also, to make this video a bit more interesting for you, I will break those theoretical parts with actual fishing. I hope this video will be helpful, especially if you are just starting out. Before going any further, it makes a perfect sense to define what a drop shooting is. Drop shooting is a lure fishing technique when a drop shot rig is used obviously and a drop shot rig is a rig where the weight and the lure are separated so there is a gap between those two and the size of that gap might differ as well. Quite often people do think that drop shooting is when you want to present your lure vertically only. But a little bit later I will demonstrate you a rig which is actually very very effective when you cast it out and retrieve. That was good, good bite. As you can see guys, very very simple but they said very precise way of fishing. That one really nailed that lure. Thank you. Some people do like to like spend quite a bit of time in one area. Not me though. I'm looking for concentrations of fish and active fish as well. So I'm expecting a bite pretty much in three seconds. Here it is. As you can see guys, you just have to kind of beautiful little perch. As I said guys, if the fish will be there and if your lure is small enough and good enough they will take it like in you know instantly more or less now very quickly about the mistakes i see anglers make when drop shooting in my opinion there are three very very big mistakes anglers make when drop shooting for perch especially first of all they are using rigs drop shot rigs where the weight and the lure are separated too much basically like two feet quite often I see that people use rigs where the gap is two feet so that's my lure and that's my weight that's a big no-no the best distance between the weight and the lure is about 20 centimeters and I worked it out and it's constant no matter the water you are fishing and no matter the day this kind of a distance about 20 to 30 i would say maybe but 20 is definitely the best and uh, the safest one to start with you don't need to go any more than that so 20 centimeters will catch you perch on any day really only situation when you want to use any longer than that is when you are fishing from the boat or you have a like echo sounder like a deeper or something like that and you clearly can see on the screen that the fish are off the bottom like prey fish and some bigger specimens are kind of chasing them then you can change the distance between the weight and the lure to something more than 20 centimeters but you always want to start with 20 centimeters no matter the day really that's the best distance which will always catch you Second big mistake is, which I quite often notice, that anglers do not check the edge next to the vertical wall. So they walk right next to the, or onto the edge, and start drop shotting around. You always want to stay away a little bit from the edge, one rod length more or less, and then you want to drop your lure very very close to the edge. Obviously drop shotting is the most effective when you can present the lure 
very very close to the walls and if you will be standing next to the edge or on the edge immediately there is a very big chance that you won't be able to present the lure in a correct way and uh, secondly you will spook the fish as well by standing on the edge so always stay away from the edge and drop your lure next to the wall. Third mistake I quite often witness is that anglers do use two big lures on a drop shot. You have to understand when you are drop shotting your lure will be off the bottom and active fish will see that lure from the distance. So no matter whether the lure will be smaller or bigger, bigger lures will only should be considered when you want to be selective. But if you are watching this video, most likely you are just starting out, so you want to use lures which are less than 7 cm in length. Then you will catch smaller perch and bigger perch, pike, zander, everything really. But if you will start with big ones, you won't get as many bites from those smaller fish and your confidence won't be as high really. As you can see, I'm moving along the bank pretty quick. I'm not wasting much time in one area at all. I know that my lure is right, my rig is right, so if I will find active fish, I should get a take pretty quick. As you can see guys, that was a proper indication. And very, very beautiful perch as well. I was talking, well not talking, I said good morning to just a walker and uh, I noticed that something is not quite right and then waited a little bit more and here it is, nice perch. And I caught that perch as you saw, not, not exactly by the wall, just kind of my rig allowed to chuck it out and nail that fish a little bit further. The most important thing when drop shotting is to feel the bottom. So you have to have the right weight. So you could feel the bottom and just like introduce like a small twitches with the rod or like little wobbles on the rod. Knowing that your weight is on the bottom. It's very very simple fishing, so very very simple fishing and very effective still. Let's move to the opposite side. As you can see guys I'm using the same rig but now I'm actually jigging. That's the beauty of that rig. It works very well while jigging and also while drop shotting so you don't have to have like two rigs or two rods set up. One rig does everything and does it very well in my opinion. That was a little indication. Another one is not taking it. Yeah. At the start I was thinking that he's not, he's not like going for it, but then the fish took it and as you saw guys, the lure is so good that I can actually wait and see exactly when the fish is taking the lure. I'm not risking striking too early. Interesting, it's this bit like all fish are coming from the middle, not close to the, to the wall at all, like all bites are more or less in the middle, interesting. Right, tackle talk, rods and reels. I will say right from the start that you don't need to buy a special rod which has a drop shot on it. Any rod which is classed as a, an ultralight or light will do, but that rod must have a fast action and also it must have a solid tip. Carbon one will be the best one. Also if the rod will have a painted section, white or red or whatever, it will be a bonus as well because you will be able to see so it's very very slow or delicate bites on that light tip. 
when it comes to the reel, obviously you should match the reel with the rod really so the balance would be good enough and it would be enjoyable to use that rod. I use for example that's a queen super light at 7 feet and 6 inches and casting rating up to 10 grams and the reel is Diva Fuego 2500. That's a very very good for drop shotting. One thing I forgot to mention, the length of the rod. Ideally, you want to have a rod for a drop shotting, which is slightly longer, from 7 to 8 feet. It will be ideal, really. Even though I kind of expected that once I will put the worm on, the bites will be a bit better, but it's not the case. That's the first fish on that worm. Little beauty, thank you. As you can see guys, when my weight hits the deck, I can see that on the tip clearly. You always must know, as I said, when the weight is on the bottom, that's the most important thing when drop shooting. Okay, now I am under the bridge actually, so it's always like a good area where the perch will be hiding. Obviously sometimes it won't be the case, but it is this time. Little beauty. I don't know whether you saw a bite like the first one, it was, I mean, it was insanely like gentle it was like i don't know how well you can see but it was like like not e no even less it was like sharp but smaller one and the, i was able to pick up that bite with uh, like on the rod tip i wasn't able to feel anything like that first first indication but then after after a while i know exactly that it was a fish that looks nice. There should be some perch in here, definitely, I think. Nothing yet. Here it is. I said to you it looked nice. And this one was quite aggressive, actually. Thank you. Beautiful fish, very healthy as well. Wow, just look at that. Thank you. Very quickly about the lures and lines for drop shotting. In my opinion, there are three main types, or at least the ones which do work very well for me when it comes to the lures. My favorite by far is a small crayfish or a creature. They do have those small antennas and when presented off the bottom, they do look very, very good and perch really can't resist to that. Then when the fishing is poor and when the fish are not really feeding, then you want to be using like a small worm. This will pick up those lazier and not as active fish. And then when you want to be a little bit more selective maybe, by that I mean when you will want to catch a bigger fish, then you can use slightly bigger lures. Not, not very big still though, like 8 centimeters in this case, but they are like active ones, little minnows or sheds. Quite often smaller perch will avoid those, but bigger ones still will be nailing them. Now when it comes to the main line, I prefer to use braid, always use braid for drop shotting, and the diameter of the braid should be from PE 0.3 to PE 0.6, that's in Japanese marking. In pounds it would be from, let's say 4 to about 10 pounds will be ideal. And on the end of that uh, that braided line you want to have a fluorocarbon hook link. Most of the time fluorocarbon hook link of about 4-5 pounds will be ideal, so about 0 0.18, 0 0.18, 0 0.20 millimeters diameter. But when the fishing is obviously very hard, then you can scale down. And if you have numbers of active pike around, then obviously you need to scale up and a lot, really. Okay, let's check here as well. It looks quite nice, like shadow. 
drops from the jetty onto the water but it's quite shallow so probably shouldn't expect miracles it's always good to check and it's good, it's good that you won't you know, need much time to do that as well have my lure all all the time very close to the wall you know was it a uh, not too sure some little snag I guess not a fish That was a fish and they got him. Thank you. Nope, nothing. Was it? Yes, there is a fish I think. Just not taking. Come on, just take it. Yes, got him in the end. It was so so difficult to hook this one. It was kind of holding a little bit, letting it go. Thank you. When it comes to the rigs, in my opinion, there are only two variations which you should consider using when drop shotting. I have both those rigs here. Let's start with the classic drop shot rig. That's the rig where the hook is fixed onto the line. So no matter how I change the line, the hook is always at the same angle to the line. This rig is good when you want to present the lure vertically, but it's not so good when you want to cast the rig out, obviously then the angle of the line will change and the hook will end up at the weird angles. It won't help with the presentation and with the fish hooking, they said the hook will be sitting at weird angle. Then the second variation is the hook which is in a small loop and as you can see the hook is moving I hope you can see the hook is moving freely so this rig is very good when you want to present the lure vertically but also very very effective when you want to cast it out and retrieve and then you will end up with the lure which will be off the bottom and the hook will be moving so it will hook the fish much easier and now let's have a quick look how to tie those both rigs. Right, let's tie this rig. I will be using black line, so you would be able to see it a little bit better. But in your case, use some fluorocarbon. It will catch you more fish for sure. Then I will grab a hook, which is wide gape, and I will thread it onto the line, starting by the opposite point, then, or opposite side, then the hook's point just like that then you want to take about I would say 30 centimeters of line and feed through the hook then all you do is just do five or six simple like blood knots or just keep passing six times the tag end through that loop where the hook is right that will be enough then you want to grab hooks point and just find the gap more or less in the middle of those of that kind of double top line so around here I want to split those two with my hooks point just like that then obviously I will start pulling important to wet the knot as always so the line would not burn whilst kind of pulling it tight here it is you can change the orientation a little bit of the hook if you need looks not too bad at all and that's it more or less then you grab a weight and attach it onto the line 
I will attach it quite close to the hook in this case so I would be able to fit everything in the shot. That's it, the rig completed very very quick. Then I will grab my lure, any lure really will do for this demonstration. In your case obviously you will be putting the lure you have the most confidence in on your hook. But that's it guys, very very quick and easy way to tie a fixed, I mean when the hook is fixed on the line it does not move drop shot rig. So the steps for my improved drop shot rig are quite similar but before putting the hook onto the line you want to have a small knot on the line but you don't want to pull it tight just yet. Then you want to grab the hook and put it onto the line just like that. The idea here is to have that hook in a small loop. So I will thread the same tag end through that small knot which is not pulled tight yet. Then I will grab both tag ends and adjust my loop size. You want to have it really quite small just like that. Then I will grab that little area by the hook and will grab that shorter tag end and will twist it around the overline two to three times. Then again the same tag end will go through that little knot which is not pulled tight yet. Okay now it would be a very good time to wet the knot before pulling it tight and then I will start to pull it tight. You want to hold the hook a little bit so when the knot will be setting the hook should end up in a correct orientation hopefully. More or less the correct orientation is when the hook's point is looking away from the lead. And you can adjust that just by holding the hook and just pulling the knot a little bit. Right, I am more or less happy with that. So you can see I have a hook in a very very small loop and the hook is not fixed anymore, it, it can move. Then obviously you want to take your weight and put it onto the line. Again, in this case I will put my weight quite close to the hook so you would be able to see everything in the shot. And then again I will grab my lure and will put it onto the hook. That's it, rig is completed. And this rig as you can see has much much more movement. The hook can move to any direction more or less. I prefer this rig over fixed rig very much really. You just want to get that hook's position or orientation right guys. That's very very important in this rig. So the hook's point or hook must be like looking away from the lead. Just like that. There are two ways how you can attach your weight onto a drop shot trick. Basically there are those special ones which have like flattened eye. So then all you do is just thread the line onto that or through that kind of a special weight and just pull that line in and the line gets stuck. It's, it's quite secure, I don't think that I ever lost a weight because of that. And then it kind of allows you to pull it out and change the distance between the, the hook and the weight. For example, as I have quite tight shot, I will make those changes visible to you. So I have a couple centimeters distance between the hook and the, and the weight. Then I can pull that line out and just slide it a little bit forward and set it in again. And now I have different distance, much bigger one. 
but I have to say I am not using this kind of LEDs very often. As I said, I think I have worked the distance between the lure and the weight which works for me all the time and that's about 20 centimeters and most of the time what I do actually I put one of them carp sleeves on the line thin and first and then I use just a simple weight of required size and then attach it to the line or to the rig just by tying any not really so I will tie one very very quickly now so it will be fixed and I will have a sleeve over it and it will mean obviously that my rig will be a little bit more like secure or durable if you like I will cut off the tag end as well so as you can see now when I will be fishing around the snags my weight will be not catching those snags because I have a sleeve so most of the time this is exactly the rig I'm using yeah little indication <laughs> Wow, they are so beautiful, those perch in that, in that kind of, you know, misty morning. They are quite, quite dark. Wow, thank you. Maybe there are more. Let's see. Now I will aim for the other side of that ladder. See, nice little cast in, between, in that deeper, like, gap. You have to say the bites, most of the bites are quite aggressive so far I can see them on the tip and I feel a little bit in the hand as well some of them that was proper proper you know like a attack oh that's a nicer one I think I will have to net this one yeah Not a massive fish, you know, but on light tackle, that's awesome. Wow, swallowed that lure. Did you see the bite? Actually, I was dragging my rig on the bottom, or my weight on the bottom, and then it was like a little tip, like little click on the tip, and then it went slack. I knew that the fish, like, attacked the lure properly. Come on. Yeah, beautiful. I love them Trent Perch. They are probably the most beautiful and like cleanest fish from any river compared. I mean, just look at that. They are perfect. And this one is very, very young fish. It will grow to a very big perch, I'm sure of it. Thank you. I catch more fish from that little area around the... It was perfect cast. From around that ladder yeah little indication obviously when you drop shot fishing those like you know brighter tips or white tips red tips whichever really color they are painted they definitely are helping I mean it's not that it a must you know but they are definitely helping with seeing the bites especially when the bites will be you know more like supple and slower slower ones you won't feel them into the hand but on the like on the white or bright tip you will see them like quite quite clearly when it comes to presentation there is only one main rule you must know when your weight hits the bottom often you will be able to feel that through the rod or see that on the rod's tip I have my rod tip in the shot here, even though I don't have much room in my room. I will try to show you what I mean. Let's say that my palm will be my 
riverbed. So once the weight will hit the poem, I must see that on the tip. So the tip will go just a little bit slacker. And also most likely I will feel that through the rod as well. And then once the weight is on the bottom, then you can start working it. You can introduce lots of small vibrations or like twitches. You can introduce a bigger one. You can even drag the weight a little bit and you will feel the bites through the rod and will see them on the tip as well. But as long as the weight is on the floor all the time, that's ideal. And you will be catching perch, zander, pike, every single time you will go out drop shotting. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks you beauty. Give back my lure. <laughs> Snag on the bottom. Yeah, indication, another one, but I don't know. Probably I won't be able to catch that fish because he's too smart, but no, I got him. He was so smart, he was like playing games with me just waited long enough and got him yes let's move nope nothing now that little trick where you can kind of bounce your lead off the wall making it to drop very close to the wall and a little bit more quieter as well drop shooting technique is the most effective one when you will be fishing around some kind of a structure and in those situations over rigs quite often will be useless and those situations might be as follows. For example, when you will be fishing around vertical walls with some kind of stumps or snags submerged or just visible. Also around jetties, floating ones or permanent ones. Also around the boats. So with a drop shot rig, you will be able to drop your lure and rig very, very precisely next to the wall between the boat and the overboat or boat and the jetty jetty and the wall and you will be picking those fish which will be feeling safe there that was aggressive take just not quite come on just take it yeah got him beautiful trend fish wow very aggressive very young fish as well, thank you. Yeah, got one. What is it? That's a snag, but I felt a fish as well at the start. I don't really know. That was interesting, I felt the fish. I got it out and I still got a fish on. <laughs> Big snag, probably. Believe or not, but there are three ways, in my opinion, how you can thread the lure onto the hook. I will show you all three of them. The most common one is just like lip hooking the lure onto the hook. Just like that. It's not bad, nothing wrong with that. Obviously, the hook is exposed and everything, but you will miss quite a few bites from smaller fish and sometimes those fish will take parts of your lures as well. So the second way is just to thread the lure onto the hook as if it would be some worm or whatever really. It won't work with every single lure, you won't be able to thread every single lure on the hook but with some lures it will work and it will depend on the lure shape as well and the hook size so that's just threading the lure onto the hook that's in my opinion is a little bit better because the hook is still exposed but fish most likely will grab like will try to grab main area or main body of the lure and the hook point will be there to hook the fish and my favorite by far really way of hooking a lure onto the hook is just off offset style. 
You can actually use small offset hooks as well for drop shotting. They will work even better. But basically all you do is just nick the lure just like that. Then you turn it around. And that's it. That's by far my favorite way of having my lure onto the hook. Obviously I could spend a little bit more time and I would be able to make the lure to look a little bit better on the hook, but still it's not bad. I have everything. I have my hook's point in the main body of the lure, so when the fish will grab, it will grab the lure and it will be hooked because the hook's point is just sticking out and this kind of hooking will allow the presentation to be a little bit better or will allow the presentation to be a little bit better because the main weight of the hook will be below the lure and it will be always more or less in that orientation so it will act like a parachute that's heavy and the silicone is lighter and it will be like balanced perfectly all the time and ready to hook that fish and the hook will always will be pointing upwards so that's perfect that fish just grabbed the lure and kind of gently and pulled it back thank you but it will be it for me for today I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.